sometimes the film slips so silently through the cracks it doesn't even register a stir of notice in the mind of the public. A few real diehard, well I see everything types, yeah sure they'll know about it and a few people attending a film festival might have seen it and then it kind of vanishes. Sure it gets a nomination or two at a film festival or other awards thing but it doesn't win and that's it, story over, gone. Well here's an Aussie film from 2009 that did just that. I came across it completely by accident doing an online search for something else and thought eh, okay I'll give it a go. Sat down with a friend of mine on the couch one night, we watched the movie and by the end of it I turned to the friend and I said without any hesitation that is probably the best Australian film made in the past 10 years. Why had neither of us heard of it? <sighs> this is the last ride. basic premise, a criminal on the run with his kid trying to bond with the child in the process. Uh, yeah we've seen similar scenarios before but they're usually about the strengthening and deepening of the relationship of the central characters. What makes Last Ride special? It's the way it bends every possible plot and character trajectory around 180 degrees from what movie convention might dictate and in doing so makes the experience deeper and more believable. Hugo Weaving plays Kev. He's had a chequered past and exactly why he's on the run with his 10 year old son Chook played by Tom Russell isn't exactly clear at the beginning but we go on this journey with them and we're fed little nibbles of information building details of the recent past. They're Afghans and they had these, these camels so are we Afghans? Oh yeah a bit I suppose but not really. We're black fellas then? No we're mongrels us. We're whatever we want to be. This is probably one of the best things that Weaving has ever done on screen and I have said before he's not an actor who's always impressed me but he does occasionally do that triple backflip. This is definitely one of those times. Matt Gudgeon's script based on the novel by Denise Young takes every single opportunity to challenge assumptions. The innocent child being protected from harm by the avenging father, a misunderstood bad guy with a heart of gold, yeah 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 you know it's, it's all pretty much how it would play out in a telly movie of the week. But here Last Ride starts in the middle of the story. Then through a series of well punctuating flashbacks the history is built telling us how Chuck and Kev got to be where they are both physically and emotionally and exactly why they're on the run. There's more than just an echo of a similar technique used in Esben Storm's non-linear Aussie road movie In Search of Anna made back in the late 1970s and like that film the filling in of the past events definitely reshapes how we react to what's happening in the present of the story. Now like any kid who got the half full lunchbox when it came to emotional support being handed out Chuck doesn't want to disappoint his dad especially when dad is offering to take him on a grand adventure. But Kev is not exactly the ideal dad, in fact he's severely damaged goods and while he thinks he's the hero of the piece, well at the start anyway, in one of those 180 degree turns I mentioned we see his hair trigger temper and violent outbursts. Chuck begins to see the chinks in his old man's armour and you might think what this kid's only 10 years old he's given to fantasies himself about what's happening. But to Chook this is an express coming of age process. We discover that he's very capable of differentiating black from white, good from bad and seeing all the shades of grey in between. It's a complex and fascinating study of two people and it's realised with great skill by director Glendon Ivan. He artfully uses the ever widening landscapes and the silences rather than words between Chook and Kev to shape our understanding of them. We don't need words to tell us what's on their minds. And then there's the scene on the lake. I'll just say wow. It's poetic, metaphoric, dramatic and a visual treat like nothing I've seen before. 
it may seem stylized, almost surreal in a film that to that point is built on a very strong sense of the ordinary. But the lake scene absolutely propels the film and the two characters towards an act three that definitely does not wimp out, not, not even for a second. I get in. Interestingly, the DVD release from Madman Australia is lavish. It's got a slip cover with a booklet containing some stunning photos, a director's diary covering six weeks of principal photography, a discussion between screenwriter and the author of the original book, souvenir postcards, a double disc, and a whole highway full of extra features. Someone clearly had faith and a budget to spend this much time and care on the packaging. For a film that only a man and three dogs went to see in the cinema release? Look, if someone can provide a genuinely informed answer, please let me know why this film failed. Now, I was going to end this with a terrible pun like, oh, last ride is no dead end. But you know what? It really is. A very dead end. A sad dead end. This amazing film grossed less than $350,000 at the Australian box office. Roger Ebert, the Pulitzer Prize winning master of the movie review, he maxed out his own star system on rating it. Yes, the most widely published film critic on the planet heaps superlatives, but still no one was interested. Last Ride didn't just fall between the cracks, it plummeted fast and deep. Totally bemused face. End. Yes, and I'm angry. It deserved better.